All right, nine millimeter versus 40 versus 45 ACP and long slides. What I have today is Federal HST. I have the 124 grain plus a P, nine millimeter, the 180 grain, 40 Smith and Wesson, and the 230 grain plus P, 45 ACP. These are about as good as you're gonna go with loads like this. And we got two 5-inch barrels for the 9mm and the 40, and the 45 is 5.3 inch, but you know, the 45 is actually a little longer of a cartridge, so you pretty much got the same barrel travel in the guns with all three of these cartridges, so that would be kind of a, a pretty fair test on this. You know, most of the tests I see on this, you know, I don't see it in equal barrel lengths. So that'll be kind of a cool comparison to see. So we are going to go through the chronograph. We're going to see what kind of velocity and accuracy we get at the same time. I do have some wood set up here. I haven't done my wood penetration test in a really long time. So we got uh, five two by fours here. And we'll see what kind of wood penetration we get with nine millimeter, 40 and 45. And my main test, of course, is going to be our clear ballistics. We have about uh, 39 inches of this stuff. We got three inches to start with. Then we have a uh, one quarter inch medium density fiber board to represent ribs or sternum into more clear ballistics. So we should get a really good idea of what we're getting with that. And this medium density fiber board representing our ribs and sternum really gives us a real world number of what to expect. And of course, we're gonna shoot from 25 yards at my full size ISPC steel silhouette target just to kind of see what we get. So let's get started with the test. All right, I'm about Five yards from the target, four yards from the chronograph. First up, we have the nine millimeter. It's rated at 1,200 feet per second. So let's see what we get with the nine millimeter if we get close to 1,200 feet per second. 1,239. 12.33. 12.33. 12.46. 12.35, so very consistent. I pulled one of those rounds. Uh, let's see what we get with the 40. All right, 40 Smith & Wesson 180 grain. We are rated at 10.10 feet per second. Let's see how close we get to that. This five inch pistol. 10.36, again, pretty consistent. Let's try the 45 ACP. All right, 45 ACP, we're right at 950 feet per second. So let's see how close we get to 950. This 5.3 inch Glock. 908. 934. 912. 927. 912 so pretty good but that makes a lot of sense i think that the 40 and the nine millimeter are rated out of four inch barrels as where this is rated out of a five inch barrel so overall they're probably all a little bit below rated velocity but pretty close so let's hit our ballistics gel block and just see how these all compare to each other all right first up we have our nine millimeter let's see what we get with this all right And what we're looking at, if we line this up to where it was, we're at about 12 and a quarter inches. Sometimes the angle of this doesn't line up with what I'm saying, but 12 and a quarter inches plus this equals about 14 and a quarter inch if it, this were not there typically. But let's shoot it without this and just see what it does. All right, right up above that with no MDF. We'll see what it does just through gel. All right. This is one of those rounds that's definitely gonna make a difference here from my normal equation, because this is not my normal equation here. I can tell right away we're at, <laughs> our damage path is like basically touching 18 inches. So a little bit more penetration than with the MDF. So typically what that means is this is going to be expanded more than this, but not necessarily always. 
It's interesting there. I would say both did well because even if we took this at face value and said this is like 14 and a quarter and this is 18, it's still within that, you know, that range of accepted distances and depths. So let's see how the 40 compares. All right, 40 Smith & Wesson through our medium density fiber board. Let's see what this does. All right. That is some serious power there. Um, we went all the way up here, and let me try to line this up just to make sure this is right here. It did slide a little bit. But what we we're looking at here is it went right to 18 inches even, which is going to be 20 inches even without the MDF. So a little bit over penetration if we took that at face value. Now, we're not going to know until we shoot it into plain gel. So let's just shoot it into the, the plain gel and see how that does without the medium density fiber board. All right, 40 into plain gel. Let's see what we get. So with our MDF, what we were looking at was about 18 inches even, or 20 inches. And this equation's a little bit off because it's at 21 inches without the MDF. So just a little bit off my typical equation, but pretty close. Now let's see how the 45 does. All right, 45 auto HST through our MDF. Let's see what this does. And I got a little bit of a feeding jam here, which is not typical for 45 ACP in this pistol. It's only a 10 millimeter issue typically. Interesting. Our 45 just went straight through this and just, we barely impacted our second block here. We're looking at um, 19 inches and that would be 21 if we count the MDF. So let's pull out the MDF, see how it does without that. And by the way, here's our nine. I believe that's our 40 and there's our 45. All seem to be expanding as they hit this. However, the 9mm looks like it did a lot less expansion. All right, 45 into the plain gel with no MDF, just through denim. Let's see what this does. Exact same type of jam. So we're looking at no expansion, actually. Well, I can tell. Yeah. See, it, it expanded up here. Got an okay expansion through the MDF, but without the MDF, it did not expand at all. That's a little bit disappointing because, you know, this is one everybody wanted to see, but it looks like the other two are doing better than the 45. All right, now I'm going to shoot those wood blocks, and we'll see what kind of wood penetration we get. All right, start with the 9mm into the wood. Here's our 40 Smith & Wesson. And here's our 45 Auto. Same type of jam. Weird. Weird. All right, 9mm, 40-45. One to the two are stuck together. Hardly any damage with that nine millimeter. 40 and 45 look more similar. There's two. All three of them went two, except that nine millimeter is barely visible. There's three. All three went two. I'm seeing something interesting here. Um, yeah, there's a hole right here. Doesn't go through though. That's where the 9mm was. It's stuck in that. Alright, here's four. Back of four. So back of four, we caught 40 coming out. 
and 45 is in for. So 40 and 45 almost penetrated the same. A nine millimeter went through the fifth board and stuck, you know, three quarters of the way through this, which this is the same as one of these. This is just basic two by four. So, you know, four and a half or so. Four, four and a half, four and a quarter, five and a half for the nine millimeter. So nine millimeter really penetrated far. All right, let's shoot from 25 yards and just see what kind of practical accuracy I can get with these guns. All right, nine millimeter. I'm gonna challenge myself and try to go for a headshot at 25 yards on that target. If not, if I can't land any, I'll just go for body shots. So nine millimeter. A bit lower than I aimed. I like the way this 9mm shoots for darn sure. It shoots real good for me. Let's try the 40. All right, 40. I'll try for a headshot, see what happens. I'm going to have to go for the body. It's all right. Let's try the 45. All right, 45 ACP. Try for a headshot. I don't know what's going on with this pistol. Well, that's shooting pretty darn good for me too in the headshot area. So overall, I'm gonna say this ammo is definitely not bad ammo. I've had to pick one of these three that I think performed the best. I'm honestly gonna say the 40. Um, the nine millimeter did fine, but we had one fail to expand with the 45. And even though it's a really, really accurate round, you had that failure to expand the 40 it's an accurate round. It's just my pistol's not sighted in quite right yet. I need to drift the sight one way or the other. It just seems to be hitting left for me for some reason. And no, it's not technique. It's just that it happens sometimes. Um, so the 40 did very well. The 9mm did well. You know, this is kind of one of those trade off things. Overall, this was the most accurate. You know, on paper, I was hitting them all in you know, one hole basically like this. And at 25 yards hitting headshots like it's nothing. But that failure to expand. So overall, I would carry that 40, but right now, if I had to, you know, put the real estate of something this size on, I would definitely carry that nine millimeter. And the main reason for that is reliability. Nine millimeter and a large pistol is one of the few that are like very, very reliable. Now the 40, 45, they'd be reliable and reliable pistols. You're holding them like this, but it's it's one of those things where you get in those situations where you're, you're shooting it like this or something, you know, it's all over the place. That nine millimeter is probably still going to function as when we go up in caliber, even though they have more stopping power, they're not going to be as reliable as a nine millimeter because it's a moderate cartridge. But overall, that's what you get today. Nine millimeter versus 40 versus 45 and long slides. They all did pretty well. So tell me what you think. So as always, comment, share and like, and thanks for watching. Thank you.